And so let's get right to it. We have joining us Lauren Victoria Burke to my right, politic365.com. To my left, we have Angela Rye, Principal and CEO of Impact Strategies. We have Hogan Gitley, Republican political strategist. We have Tower Wall, also GOP strategist, who works with the Republican National Committee. Also, Dr. Jason Johnson, Professor of Political Science at Hiram College in Ohio, here in the nation's capital. Uh, let's TV hold this thing up, folks. Uh, blowout in Arkansas race there, where incumbent Mark Pryor uh, he lost to Tom Cotton. Let's roll the graphic, please. I'm going straight down. So Mark Pryor wins, uh, excuse me, Mark Pryor loses in Arkansas. In Georgia, Michelle Nunn in her concession speech said uh, they put Georgia in play. I couldn't tell with a 12-point loss. Please go to the next graphic, please. Georgia, Michelle Nunn loses to David Br Perdue, Republican there. Let's go to Louisiana. Mary Landrieu, the incumbent uh, Democrat uh, U.S. Senator, She's in a runoff with Bill Cassidy. Uh, in New Jersey, Cory Booker easily defeated uh, Jeff Bell. He returns to the United States Senate. North Carolina, Hogan, uh, he's buying everybody drinks. He scored a hole in one, calling this race with the upset. Uh, North, please roll to the next graphic, please. I need y'all to keep up with me right now. Tom Tillis, Speaker of the House, he beat Kay Hagan. Roll the North Carolina graphic, please. Tom Tillis beat incumbent Kay Hagan uh, in North Carolina. In South Carolina, Tim Scott, he made history uh, by winning uh, his seat over Joyce Dickerson, the Democrat. Uh, he is the uh, second Republican elected to the United States Senate since Reconstruction. Ed Brooke in Massachusetts was the first. Let's go to Oklahoma, uh, where James Langford beat Connie Johnson. Connie Johnson, an African-American, lost in that race. Uh, and so, again, huge wins. Folks, come back to the panel right now. We have saw in Virginia, Mark Warner squeaks by Ed Gillespie. There's, there's going to actually be a, a recount as well. Uh, real simple, I'll start with you. Uh, let's go to, actually, we'll go to the victors. Tar, uh, you're, you're, you're smiling this morning. What the hell happened last night? Why did Republicans blow away Democrats in critical races? Well, to kind of regurgi regurgitate a term used by the president that, you know, they got a shellacking for the most part. I think the biggest thing for Republicans was the turnout, the getting those low pro propensity voters, the ground game that started early and uh, was essentially a 50-state strategy. I think they've done a lot of things differently uh, this time around. They got to those voters earlier and it made a difference. And uh, I think they're seeing the results of that. I think early on some of the, you know, there was pontificating that, you know, uh, they wouldn't get the Senate. They only had a 25 percent chance. But I think that overall, you know, that consistent uh, outreach that ongoing engagement um, day to day on the ground building the team I think uh, certainly went a long way and then you know obviously I think uh, as we got closer to the election it was clear that Republicans were going to uh, take over the Senate. Jason Johnson if you look at uh, the various issues that were talked about Republicans did not spend lots of time on the Affordable Care Act uh, when you look at the exit polling data from various networks uh, voters wanted to discuss the economy President Barack Obama actually talked a lot about the economic numbers, but somehow Democratic candidates did not do that. Yeah, it, it's really amazing to me, Roland, when you look at this race, gas prices are down, Wall Street is up, unemployment is down, you had Republicans in Republican red states voting to improve minimum wage, and Democrats still lost. So I, I think this is an election that really demonstrates a lot of just general disgust with Washington. My hat's off to the Republican Party, uh, pouring out a little alcohol for, for people on the Democratic side, but I think we've still got a very unhappy electorate, and it's gonna be the responsibility of the Republicans and Barack Obama to fix the general gridlock in Washington, D.C. Uh, Hogan.